Hi, I'm Daniel, co-founder and CEO of Ada Health. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I would like to introduce you to the topic of bots, doctors, and the future of personalized health by showing you a two-minute video uh, that features my co-founder, Martin Hirsch, and that just helped us win a silver line in the innovation category at the International Festival of Creativity in Cannes. Oh. There are 8,000 symptoms associated with over 12,000 diseases. I connect the data to help you find out what's going on. I'm Ada, the smartest AI in healthcare. The cost of healthcare is going up. I have no health insurance. Officials are warning of a major funding gap ahead. The way people interact and access healthcare is changing. Costs are exploding. Doctors' time is imploding. And the number of GPs is decreasing. Everyone in the world deserves the right diagnosis. The way ADA works is there are 12,000 diseases out there. Imagine 12,000 puzzles, each puzzle consisting of 400 pieces. Put out three pieces and then ask ADA to which box do these three pieces belong. Symptoms and diseases are linked by probabilities and ADA is able to solve the problem within seconds. Openness is the most important thing. You must not feel ashamed to give Ada this information because the information is not judging. It's taking this information to find the right diagnosis. And Ada has no time pressure like the real doctor. Ada can take the family history, personal risk factors, lab tests from the past and hand it over to the doctor in a standardized way. It does come across sometimes like you are talking to another person. This is demonstrated by some of the feedback that ADA users have provided. In the future, artificial intelligence and doctors work together to solve the problem. ADA can save a huge amount of money for healthcare systems, but also quality of life. And what is more important than that? I think you have to click something. Oh, yeah. So I think my co-founder Martin said a very important sentence in this, um, in this uh, video, which is that everyone in the world deserves the right diagnosis. I think this is something that intuitively everyone would agree with, right? But the reality is that that is not actually happening. Uh, it's not happening in the developed world, in rich countries, and it's happening much less uh, in the developing world where you know, the problems are even much bigger. And that's the case even though 9 out of 10 people Google their symptoms before they go to the doctor, if they have access to a doctor, and 1 out of 20 Google searches is about symptoms. And people are not getting the answers they need uh, that way. Um, why is that so? So, first of all, we know there is a shortage of 7 million doctors in the world. That leads to the fact that, you know, hundreds of millions of people in developing countries have no access at all. But even in rich countries, people have to wait 13 days, for instance, in the UK, to see their GP. And then when they finally get to see their GP, uh, or their specialist doctor, the average time that the doctor has for them is only 8 minutes. And that's not a lot. So it's not a surprise that um, you know, studies have shown that 20% of all patients are actually misdiagnosed. I showed on a previous slide that in the US, 90,000 people die of misdiagnosis every year. To put that into perspective, it's like a jumbo jet crashing every single day. And if that happens in one of the richest countries of the world, I think you can imagine that in developing countries, the situation is even worse. So, as my co-founder said, everyone deserves the right diagnosis, and it's not happening. So, what can we do to address the situation? As in many other industries, people believe that artificial intelligence can be part of the answer uh, to the problems. And um, 
Others say that it's just a hype. Um, in addition to small startups like ourselves, uh, larger and more established players such as IBM with their marketing entity Watson um, or Google with DeepMind have entered this space as well. Um, but recently there has been some backlash. A very prominent VC said that Watson is a joke. Um, Watson had a very sort of high profile partnership with uh, the Texas Medical Center, which got terminated by, by them and uh, very publicly terminated. Uh, and they stated that it didn't do anything for them. Google DeepMind has been sort of in hot water in the UK because of the way they accessed uh, health data from NHS patients. Um, and it's been argued that that happened without their explicit consent. And then, of course, there are others who you know, use the term AI just because it's hip and you know, they managed to get some investor money that way. I recently spoke to a fellow founder, digital health founder, and he said, uh, you know, when I, when I asked him, is this really AI that you're doing? He said, a calculator is AI. What do you want? You know? So, uh, you know, AI is obviously a, a very overused term, but that doesn't mean that it's just hype. Um, you know, when you have consumer-facing AI bots, where the consumer voluntarily gives you their information, then you don't have the problem that you know, there might not be consent that the user gives you the information. And there's clearly a lot of demand for this kind of solutions, both from the consumer side uh, and also actually from healthcare providers and other stakeholders in the healthcare industry. These two articles, are, you know, I could have clipped probably hundreds of articles. These two articles are just uh, a small example um, of that. So then the question comes, um, humans versus AI. I'm getting help here. So, uh, so does that mean that we don't need, does that mean that we don't need human doctors anymore? Does that mean, uh, you know, the AI is going to do everything, that chatbots are going to replace every doctor in the world? And there's a lot of uh, debate about that. And the question is, can a medical AI actually beat a medical professional that has trained for many, many years? Now, I can only speak from our own experience, our small startup Ada. Uh, we only launched our app uh, a few months ago. Um, and from the data that we can see, uh, very experienced doctors agree with the top three diagnostic suggestions of our app in over 90% of all cases. And then when we further compare the performance the consistency of the diagnostic performance of our app versus doctors. Um, ADA is clearly more consistent and, on average, makes fewer diagnostic mistakes uh, than the average doctor. And um, to show you some more anecdotal evidence of how users perceive this, I will show you two, um, two user reviews. We have already received more than 20,000 reviews in the iOS App Store and in the Google Play Store. Um, this is an example from the Western world, and this is the type of feedback we receive from patients every single day. You know, this is a patient that clearly has access to doctors. Unfortunately, in his case, that meant in the case of the green-eyed monster, it meant uh, he had to go to 40 different doctors to finally get his right diagnosis. And, you know, we get uh, this type of feedback every day where people say, five years, it took 11 years, I have a rare disease, it took a really long time, I've seen so many doctors, and I can't believe I entered my symptoms, and it took eight or five minutes to get to the right diagnosis. But then when you look at the developing world, you know, then the impact that we can make there is even larger, because the sort of the delta between not having any access to any doctor at all and suddenly getting access to an AI that can diagnose you as well or better compared to a human doctor is huge. Um, and this is, this is an example where someone that is not even a medical professional is actually helping others uh, by using a medical AI. And especially in regions, you know, in, for example, in Afri Africa, where there are no doctors, uh, this can really, really help improve access and quality of healthcare. Okay, so there has, has been much debate about you know, AI versus humans. Uh, will self-driving cars replace every Uber driver, every taxi driver? You know, then people are sort of rushing to conclusions and are saying, you know, medical AI will replace doctors. And um, that has never been our belief. Our belief is that you get the best outcomes if you combine the strengths of AI with human intelligence. 
And this is really, um, you know, when you get to the best results because there's just too much medical knowledge out there. There, there are too many diseases for a single doctor uh, to master and have it all in their head at the same time with all the patient-specific uh, background. It's, it's just impossible to manage. And um, on the other hand, human doctors, I believe, still have the edge when it comes to uh, human empathy and sort of caring, uh, you know, we're, we're hearing a lot from our users that they, it's already sort of making them feel better and it feels like they're talking to an actual person. But I think sometimes you just need that human uh, touch and empathy. And that's why we also, through ADA, provide access to top human doctors. Because we believe that the combination uh, of these two is actually the strongest. And uh, the way we can help the doctor actually to get to better results for the patient is that we include personal fac risk factors. Is someone a smoker? Does someone have diabetes? Does someone have hypertension? Does someone have previous medical history? We can include all kinds of sensor and biometric data through integration with Apple HealthKit or Google Fit. Um, and then, you know, ADA actually sort of calculates the most likely diagnosis and provides the result of that calculation both to the patient and to the doctor, which ultimately leads to better outcomes. The next step, and a lot of this is already happening, is that we go from sick care to health care, from reactive symptom assessment to proactive monitoring and prevention. And the way we do this is that we can even start earlier, we can include your genetic uh, risk factors. For instance, I have done the 23andMe, you can link that to your ADA account. And in my case, uh, you know, we know that I have a higher risk uh, of, for example, celiac disease, I have a three times higher risk. So if I enter these symptoms as opposed to someone else who we don't know anything about, then this helps to get to a more accurate diagnosis. Your doctor alone, without any um, AI help, cannot do that. And we're including image recognition, lab tests, wearables, uh, and that enables us to proactively intervene before adverse outcomes occur. Uh, just you know, to add a couple of words about who we are, uh, our name is Ada Health. We're based here in Berlin. Uh, we also have an office in London and Munich. Uh, we've worked on this for six years. We started from the specialist side on the doctor side, then made the, the software available to GPs. And just a few months ago, we launched our patient version uh, worldwide. Uh, after a little over half a year, we now have over a million downloads. It's growing by 60% month over month. I mentioned we have 20,000 reviews, 4.7 stars out of five. Uh, it became the number one medical app in 130 countries. And right now, a new assessment is done by someone somewhere in the world every seven seconds. So, we're, you know, we're quite proud of what we've done. But we're even more excited about what we can do in the next few years because we truly believe that we can help hundreds of millions of people to get to better health outcomes um, because everyone deserves the right diagnosis. Thank you. Do you want to take one question from the audience? Sure, of course. Is there a question out there for the audience? So we have these little catch boxes here. The deal is you've got to catch it and you've got to talk into it. That's the deal. Um, hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, quite exciting talk. I would like to ask you if you have been um, uh, creating any evidence-based data on how you compare to GPs in different countries and if you've been talking to payers about uh, supporting this app in a way of a first-line um, therapy or uh, information. Yeah, so as I, as I briefly mentioned, uh, and I didn't go into detail on that, so first of all, we're running several validation studies with renowned universities, um, medical universities, uh, both in Germany and in the UK. Uh, and we've also done some internal benchmarking versus the GPs that we work with, and they're all really highly qualified and experienced. Um, and of course, this is sort of a sensitive topic, because as I said, we want to work with doctors, not against doctors, obviously. So, um, you know, we, we're thinking about how to best position that, how to best uh, convey the message. But what I mentioned is that we can already see that while we're not claiming that we're right 100% of uh, the time, because right now ADA mostly relies on patient-reported findings and symptoms, uh, what we can see is that the consistency is higher. So on average, we're actually doing better than the average of the GPs that we've worked with. 
any inter-country uh, comparison? No, we, so we've, it's just Germany and UK so far where we have compared this. But it's interesting that we get a lot of, um, so we do get a lot of uh, inbound interest from uh, GPs uh, and from other healthcare providers, uh, both in the developed and in the developing world. Uh, every day we get, so people write to us and say, I'm already using this with my patients, or they say, how can I use this with my patients? I would love to. So that's really encouraging. Throw the box. There was a question in the middle there. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> We've crossed box talk. <laughs> we'll Hello? do the red one first. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yeah. I can hear you. Um, my, actual, my, uh, my question is actually about, because um, uh, the consumer-facing app is, feels fairly singular focused for a consumer, but I'm actually interested in how your team structure looks like for your product and engineering. Um, so, sorry, you mean the developers? Um, I'm interested in how your product and engineering teams are set up. Okay, um, so that's that's an interesting question. So <laughs> we have so we have a research unit which is sort of focused on things, uh, and that makes us a little bit different from from some others that started out as a sort of a basic symptom checker. So we we very much come from sort of the academia and science angle. So even though we're a small startup, we're you know a little below a hundred people. We afford ourselves the luxury of having a team of 10 uh, you know, researchers, basically, who um, look at things that you might not see in the product tomorrow, but that you might see in the product in six months, in 12 months, in 18 months. Uh, and then, of course, we have you know, the, the usual sort of software development uh, set up. I mean, we have front-end, back-end developers. I'm actually the least technical person in the entire company, so uh, you know, I'm happy to, to connect you to our... By the way, this is another thing. So we're, we're always looking for you know, brilliant software developers. That's probably the biggest need we have right now. So if anyone is here and, you know, thinks about joining our team, please get in touch uh, afterwards. I'm happy to connect you to our CTO who can explain the details of the team structure much better than I would be able to. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And the question of the black box will be our last question. Yeah. Who is investing in you? So, um, so we're so far, again, this is another unusual thing. We're completely privately funded so far. Um, mainly by uh, friends and family. Uh, you know, obviously we've been doing this for over six years. So, uh, you know, as you can imagine, uh, an amount that is not insignificant has already been uh, invested in the company. We have so far not taken on any institutional uh, money. Sometimes it's good to have friends and family who really believe in you. Um, but, uh, you know, we are now receiving quite a bit of uh, interest from institutional investors, and who knows, maybe there will be an announcement sometime in the near future. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.